Hi and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial series where we'll be looking at PowerShell and Excel. So we'll be using a built module um, that works with Excel. Now you don't actually need Excel installed on your computer to work with this module. Uh, so you can actually install this module on a server and have it automate some tasks and create Excel spreadsheets uh, for other people to go into like a repository and get those Excel spreadsheets. Uh, the first video we'll be looking at is really just how to install the module, how to do a basic export and a basic import. Then in the second video, I'll go a little bit deeper and show you guys how to do a little bit more of a deep dive and how to include some pivot charts in those Excel exports that we're creating, how to create new worksheets. Uh, so do some more advanced functions. Now we're not going to be covering every function in the module because this module is very, very large. Um, and a lot of the functionalities require like definitely more of an Excel knowledge. Um, and I am by no means an Excel expert. So I will be covering the parts that I think are very, very useful for system administration and could help you guys uh, automate and look up and create some reports with Active Directory maybe some event viewer stuff if you guys wanted to do it with event viewer, but I'll be using some examples mostly related to Active Directory um, and I'll be doing some process reports as well. So let's go ahead and let's actually get started here. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna install the module. So that is just using the commandlet install module. And then the module name is actually called import Excel. So very, very easy name to remember. It's just import Excel. So we're just going to run this here. And then it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to install it from the untrusted repository? Uh, we're just going to say yes to all by typing in A here. Uh, so this is just going to install the package import Excel or install the module. So once we have this installed, it should only take a few moments here. All right, so the module is installed. So now if we do an import module at the top and then we're going to import Excel as our module name. So once we have that in here, we have all of the commandlets. All right, so now what we can do, um, if you want to even see if we can do get module import Excel and we run this here we can actually see that it is imported. And then if we actually do a select exported commands, and then we can actually do a dash expand property on this. That should give us a nice little list here. So here are all the different functions that you can do. As you can see, there is quite a lot of them. Uh, so like I said, we'll just be looking at a few of these, the ones that I think are probably most useful um, for helping with automations of systems and creating reports that you might want to look at. So let's first off by first creating our first export. Because um, I'm going to do an export first. Um, instead of doing an import, because I believe that most of the time we'll probably be exporting to Excel and maybe not so much importing. Um, so the nice thing about exporting directly into Excel, now we already have the ability to export to a CSV, which you could open up in Excel. Uh, but a lot of times, depending on your localization, a CSV file might not be the best. Some people don't really know how to import it into Excel properly if the delimiter is set to something different than their localization settings. Uh, so the Excel just makes it really nice for them and it already comes with that extension for Excel. So let's go ahead and let's actually just create a variable here called export folder. And we're just gonna set this to where I want the export to go to. So we're gonna put that in C users. We're gonna select my user. We're just gonna put it in desktop and in the Excel folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an export of the get process. So let's do get process here and let's just see how that looks like once again. 
So here we can see we get all of our processes. Uh, we get the CPU, uh, the ID, uh, the memory. So we can see that we have a lot of Chrome windows, op uh, Chrome processes running. So most of it's pretty, pretty straightforward there. So we're going to do a get process and we're going to pipe that to export Excel. And then our path is going to be our export folder backslash and we're going to call it process.xlsx or the extension for Excel. And then what we're going to want to do is now you could simply do this and this will actually work. Um, so if I actually just show you guys this one, All right, so it does work. So we do have our Excel file here. Now, I actually don't have Excel on this computer, but I do have LibreOffice. So it will let us um, look at the exports that I'm making. Now, there is a slight uh, note to say here. We're going to be looking at through LibreOffice today, um, but in the next uh, video where we're looking at pivot charts, uh, we're not going to be able to look at it from LibreOffice. There seems to be something in LibreOffice that just doesn't like the Excel uh, charts. So for that, what I like to do is I like to use the Excel online. Um, as long as you have a Outlook account, uh, you can easily access the Excel online for free with your OneDrive account. Uh, so let's just open up this Excel file here in LibreOffice. So here we have it. So we have our entire dump of our get process here. Uh, so very, very useful. Um, we didn't have to export it into CSV. Now, the only thing is we have these columns that we have to expand to see all the data in. And if we scroll down, we actually lose that header name. So what we can actually do is if we don't save and we close out of that, what we can actually do is we can actually do a parameter called freeze top row. So that's going to freeze that top row, uh, which is basically our header. And then what we'll want to do is we're going to do a auto size. Um, so auto size should automatically adjust all those cells and we should actually not have to adjust them. So once we run this here, where it uh, should be, it is done. So let's go back into here, into desktop Excel, and let's go into process here. So here we have it. If we scroll down, we still see that header stays there and all of our rows are actually fully maxed out to the size they should be. So that is actually perfect. Makes it a lot easier for the end user to read these reports at the end of the day compared to those CSV files where they would have had to import it into Excel. They would have had to freeze that top row if they wanted to keep it there. So you're just doing all of this work for them. Um, so it makes it a lot easier for the end user to use that report, of course. So that is really the basics of exporting. So now let's actually import. So I actually created a file before this video. So let me just show you guys the file that I've created. So I've named it test import very easily here. Um, so what we can actually see, and I'm actually going to delete this sheet here because this sheet should not be in there. So what I have here is I have an Excel file with two sheets. I have one sheet called users and one sheet called countries. And as we can see, users has name, age, country, and we have various names here, various ages and various countries. And actually the countries is a country code. And then we have countries here, which has code and name. So we have the country codes and we have the country names here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're actually going to import that and we're going to see how this actually ends up looking. So let's do an import dash Excel, and we're going to point to our path. And our path for me here is actually our export folder once again. 
and test import dot xlsx. So if I just run this, once again, it will work. So we actually see that we do get our first sheet, which was the user's sheet. But now what if I wanted that country's sheet? So there would actually be a very, very easy way to do this. So in the parameters, there is a worksheet name where we can actually specify the worksheet name. So we can actually specify countries in here. And then if we run this line, we actually see the countries. And then if we just switch this back to users, we see that we get the user. So you can specify the worksheet name here, which is really, really cool. And kind of like the import CSV, we can even pipe that to a select name and age. So we only care about the name and age and we can run this here and we only get the name and age. So really once you import it, it, it works very, very similarly to a uh, CSV. Now, let's say you have an Excel sheet that doesn't have um, header names. So it actually comes in with a built-in parameter for that. So we actually have a parameter called header name. Now in here, now I already have headers. So this is going to basically create someone with the name name and the age of age, um, but it will still provide like a fairly good example. So let's do name age, and then let's do uh, country, uh, country code. So if we import that, so there it is, it creates our header that we just specified with name, age and country. Now this actually also lets us if we only wanted the name and age, we can just specify the header name, name and age, and it will actually only import those two columns. Again, creating a new header. So if you just want to specify which header that you want, I would still just and the Excel file already has the headers in here. I would simply pipe it to select and then name and age. So that would be really the uh, the quirkiness of the import, uh, but also it's very, very useful. And now let's say we want to combine the import and the export together. So we have this Excel file. So let me just reopen it. So we have our test import. Uh, let me just delete this sheet here once again, and let me just save. So we have our users and we have our countries. So let's say we wanted to actually make a third um, sheet here where we just had our users and our ages. Uh, but let's say we wanted the actual country name in a third sheet here. So let's actually do that together. Uh, so what we'll want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and import our users. So we're going to do users. And then we're going to also import countries here. And we're going to do that as import Excel. And we're going to import it the exact same way. But we're going to specify the worksheet name of countries. So if we run these two lines here, we're going to see that we have our users and we have our countries. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to create a, um, a array list here. So let's do a detailed users equals system dot collections dot array list. And let's just make it an empty array list. And let's do a for each user, user in users. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, create a, uh, let's go ahead and let's actually grab the country name right away. So let's do country name is going to be equal to countries. We're going to pipe that to where code because we know that that is our 
column is going to be code, and that's going to be where code is equal to user.country. And then let's just user.country. All right, so now if we actually just go ahead and just a write output here for country name. Now we can actually see we do get um, kind of just looks the same there. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a we are going to wrap this and do a dot name. So we're only grabbing the name. And then if we look at that, so here we are, we're just grabbing the names. And then what we are going to go ahead and do is do a user dot uh, so let's do a, a new user equals a new object and we're going to do a type name of ps object here and then we're going to do a add member input object is going to be new user member type is going to be a note property name is going to be name and then the value is going to be user dot name So let's do this add member here a few more times. And we're going to do user.age for the age. And then we're going to have one more for country. And this, we are going to put the country name. And then what we're going to do afterwards is we are going to do a detailed users dot add new user. So we're adding that user. And of course we don't want that output. So we're just going to do a um, square bracket void square bracket. Now, if we look at detailed users here, we can actually see that we get our new table. So we have all the names of our users, the age and the actual country name. So then what we're going to do is we're going to pipe this to export Excel and we're going to point it to the path. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to point it to the that exact same path. So our, our file that we imported. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a worksheet name and we are going to name this sheet users with country name and that should be all we really need so if we actually just run this entirely here and we go ahead and we open up our test import we can actually see that we have a new sheet here called users with country name and we can actually see our data in there. So as you can see, the power of this is definitely pretty powerful. We can go in, open up an Excel spreadsheet, select the data from specific sheets, combine them. You would even be able to grab data from a different Excel file, combine two, uh, two data sets from two different Excel files, combine them, create a new Excel file with that data combined put that data in an existing Excel spreadsheet already. So there is a bunch of bunch of power in here that you can do. And we haven't even really explored the pivot tables, um, which could create some really, really cool graphs to give you a little bit of a better uh, view of what's going on. Maybe you want to see how many of your users are located in a specific spot. Uh, so you know where to focus um, more of your resources. 
So we'll be seeing that in that next video. If you guys have any questions or you guys want to see anything related to this module, leave a comment down below and I will be sure to actually create that video for this series. And we can always add on to the series later on. So if you guys are watching this video later down the road and that video still isn't created, let a comment down below and I will come back to this module and I will create that video for you guys. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.